Hey developers, this is Marco Arruda. Today I'm explaining about the ROS domain ID, which is something new for ROS2 that works on top of DDS, a communication layer. So in practice, it makes it possible to isolate two or even more ROS environments in the same physical network. So let's check how to do this. As usual, I'm going to use the Construct platform. So if you don't have an account yet, you can create and start using for free. Just uh, signing up right here. Uh, in my case, I'm going to do the login with my original account. And I'm going to use this Rojek here, ROS2 Foxy, to demonstrate, which is the, uh, the latest long-term support version of ROS2. So just create the Rojek, press run, and wait a few seconds until you have the environment ready. In the meantime, about the ROS domain ID, so the official documentation explained to us that this is basically a way to put two or even more ROS environments in the same network because of the way it's going to map the ports of the nodes you are working with. So basically uh, we have a short and long version of uh, explaining about this, but, and we are, I'm going to show the practical version about how to use it. And yeah, we can start from the short version, for example. Uh, basically, you can use a number from 0 to 101, and it's going to make available all the nodes that you launch from your computer uh, using a calculation to map the number of the port each one of these nodes are going to use. So, for example, if you have a domain ID as number 0, which is the default value, uh, so the first participant will have those ports to work. And then you have the second participant, for example, a second node, and the third and so on. So as you can see, the number of the port each one of them are using will be increasing until they reach a certain limit, which is the first port of the next domain ID. So of course, we're going to have a, a limit. And this is around uh, 120 nodes, which is actually a very high number. But this is very important to, to have in mind uh, as long as you, you don't uh, use the maximum number of agents. So let's see in practice. So right now I have my Roger open. I'm going to close the notebook. And here in the web shell, it's very important because uh, in our ROS2 environments, we have configured ROS1 and also ROS2. I'm going to also run another shell here. Uh, let me reset the number. And there we go. So I have to source, actually I'm going to put in my bash rc, the ROS2 version, the ROS2 workspace actually, and yeah, this is already set up here, so I'm sourcing ROS2 workspace every time I start a new shell, and here I'm going to launch an example, so what I have here is the, okay, so let me, give me an example, where did I put it? Okay, there it is. So I'm going to start publishing a message to a certain topic. So in this case, I have ROS2 topic pub uh, with one hertz to the topic string topic. And this is the type of messages. So standard message is a string. And finally, the data. So hello from my domain. I'm going to press enter. And at this moment, we are publishing to this topic. I can check in a different shell. So there it is, ROS2 topic list. I can see the topic, so string topic, and I can even ROS2 topic echo subscribe to the messages. So as you can see, we are publishing here a hello from my domain. And I'm receiving this message here. And actually, there is a typo at the end, so uh, it doesn't, it's not so important. I can just remove it. Okay, so hello from my domain. Okay, I need to put the escape chart here. Yeah, there it is. So hello from my domain. And this is the ROS domain ID number zero. Uh, how do I know this? Because I didn't set up any ROS domain ID. 
So for example, if I stop publishing here and just at the beginning of the command to publish the message, uh, I set up Ross domain ID equals to one, for example. Actually, let's put it, uh, yeah, equals to one. I think it's good enough. Press enter. And the topic is still, uh, publishing is still working as expected, but the publisher, it's not receiving any messages anymore. So why does it happen? Because my subscriber expects to have some messages in this topic in the network uh, that stands for the ROS domain ID equals to zero, but because this is the default one. But in this case, right now I am publishing to the ROS domain ID number one. So how do we handle this? ROS domain ID equals to one. And from this point ahead, I can see the messages. So it doesn't work only for the ROS topic, for example, it also works for the ROS to topic list, for example. I don't have the topic anymore. So string topic uh, doesn't even exist in this new environment. Actually in the default environment, which is uh, ROS domain ID equals to zero. But if I set it up just before the execution of the command, I can see the topic here. So let's try with a second or actually third environment. So for example, I want to publish the same, exactly the same message, but I'm going to change the name of the topic. So string topic and three. And at the beginning, Ross domain ID equals to number two. There it is. Now we are publishing. And again, I'm sourcing the bash folder. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. So let me fix this typo. This is the problem with the copy and paste approach. And there it is. Okay, great. So I'm publishing the same, exactly the same message in a different environment. So the name of the topic, uh, string topic environment three as well. And here, ROS domain ID equals to one. I don't see the topic name uh, with this name here. In this case, I can only see the first topic that I'm publishing to the environment with number one. And then if I change to number two, we'll see a different topic name here. And we can even uh, use echo, for example. I need to change Ross domain ID, this one, and then string topic and three. And there it is, hello from my domain. And this is the domain uh, ID equals to two that I call it, uh, that I, where I created the topic environment three. So yeah, basically that's it. As you can see, we can isolate uh, different ROS environments in the same physical layer. This is very important to have in mind the concept and how it works. You can go further into the documentation of DDS and check uh, why you have those limits and how the name of the, the number of ports are chosen. So there are some rules here, you can read about it. But basically, if you wanna go faster, if you wanna go safer, just go for the short version, for instance, uh, which is basically re recommend you to work uh, with the domain numbers from zero to 101. And also pay attention to the limits of agents. So in this case, you can use the calculator here, for example, domain ID equals to zero. And then if you have the participant uh, 120, the part number uh, will reach, so 7,600, for example. And then if you go to the next domain, this is more or less the same number you are gonna have here. So 7,660 and then here, so you're gonna be careful about this so you don't collide the name, number of the ports when you work with multiple ROS environments and uh, isolating them. Okay, great, so that's it. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget if you like this kind of tutorials in our channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and recommend the channel. See you, bye.